All right, up next, we have a really exciting session by Chantel Botha. She's the Managing Director for Brand Love Customer Experience from South Africa. She's going to be speaking on the silver bullet to improving your customer experience. Before I hand over the digital stage to her, I would like to give a small introduction about Chantel. She's an innovation magician and a brand warrior. Chantel leads brand love into battle against life without meaning or significance. Delivering passion and driving purpose are her why, and she specializes in designing value and connection into every experience, whether it is a customer, employee, corporation, or individual. With a hat full of magic and a diverse background in business economics, computer sciences, customer experience design, coaching, public speaking, e-commerce, and strategy, she combines her varied interests to deliver revolutionary originality and EQ to brands and businesses. With a passion for people, she also spearheads a number of social projects, including robotics youth program called Kind Bright Minds. She's also an ambassador for fun and is certified as a virtual facilitator, customer experience professional, laughter yoga, and Lego serious play facilitator. Welcome to the event, uh, Chantel and team. How are you doing today? We are just doing absolutely amazing, Pooja. So we blow some love into the house today. Amazing, amazing. So, people, you've been sitting for a long time today, so I reckon we need to get moving a little bit. Alrighty, everyone. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Before I go into the presentation for today, I want to just go a little bit down memory lane. And I got very nostalgic, very, very nostalgic. And I'm going to quickly show you something from uh, five years ago. This was CM Africa five years ago. And let's see, let's see if you hear the sound. Just look at this. I was just so incredibly nostalgic when I found this. Look at all the people. Look at all the people. Sure, those were the days, people. But now we've got digital and, and, and virtual, and we try and absolutely, absolutely make the best of that. So I want to start us off today with uh, you answering a few questions and um, Pooja, if I could ask you to put this link into the chat for us, because I want to start us off just on a bit of a discussion about, you know, what are our challenges, you know, what, what, what's, what's happening currently in your environment. Um, and if you could please lift your phone and scan that QR code that's on the screen right now. Or if you wanted to type into your browser, www.bcast.live, and the session code is CEM2021. So this is going to be your way uh, to, to chat with us uh, and to share some of your thoughts with us. So I'm going to give you just a little bit of time just to land on that. So www.bcastlive and enter that session code. And then the first question I'm going to give you, the first question I'm going to give you is just how do you feel right now? How do you feel right now? Fantastic. And we see those, those answers coming in. This is your way to just give us an idea of where you're at. Great stuff. We're seeing people happy. Some people are curious. All right, let me just check with Pooja. Pooja, people can get to the link, right? Excellent. All right, I see a few people there tired. Yo, this time of the year, it feels like we're missing three months, right? And everybody kind of brings in their demands. This time of the year, people want stuff done in very short times, right? Okay, fantastic. Some tired, some bored, some curious, some happy. All right, fantastic, folks. Keep on coming in. Amazing. So at the end of the session, you will get 
a little swag bag to make you feel better. I have um, I have shared with Puja a link where you can download my Amazon book. It's very light reading. There's lots of pictures in there. It's not heavy reading. It's not the kind of thing you use for uh, your insomnia. So Puja will share that towards the end of the session. All right, excellent. And all emotions are welcome. All emotions are welcome. Right, now, your next activity, your next activity. And if some of you are getting French on your mobile phone, it's just because I love speaking in French. If you just put in your name and your email address, it'll, it'll go past the French. Okay, so great. Next question. What is your biggest CX challenge right now? What is your biggest CX challenge right now? Tell me, what are some of your big challenges right now? One of the challenges is you don't have enough time, right? Time is just not enough. Oh, ROI. I know. I always say to people, when you get frustrated with your CFO, poor dude's just doing his job. I think we need to really take that ROI question head on and manage people's expectations properly. That remains a tricky one, I hear you. Collaborating with all stakeholders. Yeah, absolutely. Adoption of digital platforms. Yeah, they say this uh, kind of this current digital evolution have probably uh, pushed us 20 years into the future in terms of digital adoption and in terms of disruption. Aligning the emotive experience with the transactional in the light of the change world. Absolutely, absolutely. We have, you know, a lot of our, our client interactions, our client co-design sessions, people are telling us that, you know, transactions, the brands are cold, brands are robotic. And the great news I've got for you is that can be solved through great design. All right, I'm seeing le delivering the same level of service without being able to see our clients face to face lead management versus marketing spend one view of the customer lack of empathy amazing thank you very much for your for your contribution then i'm going to ask you one piece of wisdom or a lesson that 2021 gave you if you look back on the year like one piece of wisdom that this year gave you you can probably think together a lot of things that suck this year but one piece of wisdom that this year gave you. Yeah, know the value of customer experience. Be patient and take care of yourself. <laughs> if you can't control it, let it go. Amazing. Yeah, that's a hard one. Letting, letting it go. And even the things we thought we had control over. I think the last 18, 20 months have taught us that we don't really have control over a lot of things. Yeah, don't take everything so seriously. <laughs> We've learned what's really important. Yeah, what a massive reprioritization. Excellent. I love, 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 love the wisdom. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, the last thing, if you had a magic wand, what would you get your CEO to agree to in 2022? And you are allowed to be funny when you respond to this one. So if you had a magic wand, what would you get your CEO to agree to for 2022? Blue sky no limitations we remove all the limitations just your imagination <laughs> uh, people you are so funny empathy training for all especially the ceo well done well done work from home permanently a strat session in Bali. Oh man, I love it. I love it. I went to Bali, I swear, for a strat session. Seriously. November, November 2019, just before the whole shit show started. Real work from anywhere in the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, funny thing, people, I have not met 
uh, half of the Brand Love team in person and we've got a global team from everywhere in the world and it doesn't matter anymore. You know, if you prefer working in a time zone where you work in the middle of the night, you can now do that. Yeah, pay attention to customers' feedback, exercise empathy, work from home forever and ever. A podcasting leader of each client. Amazing. Work from home permanently for him to attend my session. Absolutely. Your wish is my command. You can invite me. Send me a mail. I'll come and chat to your CEOs. Budget and resources to do what needs to be done. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I can, I can sense a lot of passion here and I can sense you know, our continuous frustration with having to influence and I had a mentor years ago that said to me, Chantal, you got to write in the snow because tomorrow they get there and they've forgotten. It's this little bit of amnesia. Yeah, I realize that CX is the sale. Absolutely. So I've prepared a presentation for you today and I'm just going to queue up that presentation. Let me just quickly queue up that presentation. And thank you, Brand Love team, for this amazing support that you're showing me to not be in the room alone. Excellent. So, people, I'm hoping that you see my presentation. Let me just quickly check. Brand Love team, just one of you unmute yourselves. You're seeing my presentation. I can't see you. Able. Fantastic, yes. fantastic. All right, great. So, people, I know I usually overstay my welcome, but um, I want to just move through the little storyline that I've prepared for you. So the title of my presentation said, I'm going to share with you the silver bullet to improving your customer experience. Now, you know, unfortunately, I probably oversold that a little bit because there isn't one silver bullet. All right, there isn't one silver bullet. I want to propose an approach for you today that I believe will make your brand successful. I had the fortune of spending time right before lockdown with the Ritz Carlton and with Zappos, really on a quest to understand, you know, how have they architected their businesses? What is the magic recipe inside of those ecosystems? And I want to share with you. Uh, uh, some of what I found, what I found there. And, and I think, you know, igniting a love affair for your brand uh, in the hearts and the minds of your employees is absolutely, absolutely in my mind, the differentiator uh, for the future. I believe a poor customer experience and a poor employee experience is just a symptom. It's only a symptom of some underlying, underlying problems. And often as brands, we're quite arrogant, like, you know, I want my customers to love me. I want my employees to love me. But sometimes I forget I need to love them first. All right. So I want to share this video with you. And let's see if we can get the sound. This was just beautiful when I found this. Now, let me see if I can get this to play. Now, why does this not? You know, this always happens. Like, why will this not play? And somehow this doesn't want to play. Okay, let me just do it like this. It's 8 a.m. Millions of employees show up each day to put their names on a register. The world we see around us, countries and continents have been built on the back of these signatures. The future too will be written by these signatures. Signatures of employees. You are an employee. Your boss is an employee. The cable guy is an employee. The overworked, the unsung, the white collared, the blue collared, the father of a nation, fathers and mothers, sons and daughters, healers, 
protectors. The girl you will fall in love with. The graveyard shift veterans. Even chief executives. Actors. Spot boys. Master chefs and waitresses. Truth is, we are all employees, putting our names on ideas that shape our world. Truth is, every employee is a hero. Enough said. Let's go do what we all do best. Let's go to work. Amazing. So when I found when I found this video, it's it's just really like understanding that you know a lot of us are in the same boat. A lot of us are having similar experiences, and even if we look at the leaders on top, often they are having their own challenges. So I want to start with just asking you, you know, is your brand lovable? You know, often we think that, you know, we want to turn our employees into these brand champions and we expect them to run into our burning building and 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 save our very, very last product from 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 a fire. But does that does our brand justify the personal risk, the time, the ideas they invest and sometimes the feelings that they have, um, whether their emotions are really safe with with our brand? So if we look at, you know, can people really love brands? I think those were two of the examples that really came up for me in terms of, you know, Harley Davidson. It's not just a tattoo. It's not just a logo. It, it says more about me. It, it says I'm part of a tribe. If I look at the Apple logo, Johan, uh, my business partner and husband, he's, he loves he loves Apple. I mean, he, he like the, the little sticker that comes in the box is on the back of my car. Just like he loves Apple and it says I'm different. So, you know, is the brand aligned with my identity and, and does it allow me to co-brand in a way that it says like I stand for something? So let's quickly look at what gets in the way. What makes brands have a challenge around being lovable? I think a lot of brands have lost their heart a little bit when the craftsman and the maker was still the seller and the person who serviced the product. Think about the person making shoes. You know, that was very close together. The craftsman being the one who sells it and, and services it. Now, a lot of this is like layers and layers removed. So often, uh, some of these interactions become transactional because the craftsman is no longer involved in the passionate delivery of these of these experiences. Also, brands have sometimes just lost their focus a bit. Uh, they're focusing a lot more on profit than what they're focusing on people. And some brands have lost their purpose. They, they're managed by fear instead of inspiring each other with, with stories of courage. So let's look at you know, if we do nothing, if you go away from my presentation, say Chantal was entertaining, but listen, it's not going to work for my brand. You know, let's look at what's what's going to be the impact if if we don't take, you know, the people part really seriously in terms of our brand experiences. A lot of employees will potentially leave uh, to find love. And, and if you look at what's happening with the great resignation, there's a lot of reasons for the great resignation. But fundamentally, I believe people are just not happy anymore to put up with shit. People want more from the eight hours that they spend at work. People want more flexibility. They want more purpose. And that's really why, why that's happening. The other side of that is if people don't leave and they stay, but they disconnect, they go on autopilot. That, that's almost worse. Now, we've worked for years and years with thousands of people and we see a lot of people on autopilot and and we look at that and with a lot of empathy because you know the, the great thing about autopilot it doesn't take as much energy it takes a lot more energy to actually be emotionally invested and to continue if i look at my own career i spent years and years thinking if i love my brand and my employer enough they're going to love me back and i think 
some of my roles that just never happened. Um, then if we look at the third part of that, like I'm, I'm, I'm half connected, but I'm kind of nearing burnout. So I'm still not, you know, fulfilling my purpose. I'm, I'm not delivering an, uh, an optimal uh, and efficient uh, craft. And that's also not great. Now, where we see the symptoms of that is that the customer experience and the product will suffer. Uh, we won't deliver the experiences that we really want. So how do we ignite a love affair? It really starts for me with your brand must stand for something. The purpose and the values must be like real. I must be able to identify with it. I must be able to believe it and I must be able to feel it. Now, some of you that have heard me present before, I've, I've had this little re personal research project for years and years. And what I do when I when I go into a new brand and they invite me to come and speak to the executives, I go to the toilet first because I go I go and look at the language that's on the posters on the walls because sometimes you know on my way to the fifth floor I'll pass some posters on the wall that has the values on and if the language in the toilets and the language on the on the values posters don't match, I know that these gaps these obvious gaps and I kind of say it tongue in cheek but it it, it has proven really really. Uh, to be true. Um, so that's also why it's really important that leaders go first and that leaders believe the purpose and the values and that they truly own it and that they set the, the example for that. So let's quickly look at what I think people need to love a brand. You know, what are the ingredients? If we want to bake this love cake, what is the ingredient? So first of all, they need connection. They need a tribe that they feel, these are my people. You know, we've be, we've seen people in very hard environments, call center environment, they've got seven different screens open in, to be able to service a customer. And, you know, they, they get sick and then they don't take their sick days because they go, I'm not going to let my team down. I cannot let my team down. I've got to be there. Otherwise, someone else is going to suffer. Then we also look at creating love for the craft. Sometimes we've disconnected. We get so transactional and so KPI obsessed that we, we lose the love for the craft. Then if people truly feel that they make a contribution, I believe that that's where they optimally perform. And then there's growth these coherence so that people believe in the values and the purpose that they feel they truly aligned with what the brand stands for and then celebration being acknowledged and i'm not saying bonuses i'm saying being acknowledged and celebrating people and their successes and sometimes failures so i believe in this thing called the fuck up festival and brand love's going to have one shortly and we're going to look at all of the things that didn't go as planned and what's the wisdom that we got from that because often we want to hide the failures often we want to just skim over the failures but they're really really important because they carry messages for us all right so Let's look at creating this ecosystem of love. And a lot of companies are saying, oh my word, we're in financial services. No, we're in insurance. We're a compliance driven environment. We can't do this. And I'm saying bullshit, you can. So you start by setting your emotional target. What is the emotions that you want to evoke in your clients and your employees? And if you take these steps of a person finding their personal purpose and vision, developing some love for themselves, then looking at, you know, how do they connect with their team? What's the expectations in their team? Clarify some of these relationship expectations, the purpose of the team. Then looking at the brand and then the wider stakeholders. I, I saw on the board earlier, you know, managing stakeholders. You've, you've got to ask yourself in terms of stakeholders, what are, they, what are their expectations? What are they looking for? And how can I better satisfy their needs? And then ultimately the customer. You know, how do I connect with the customer? How do I make sure that me as an individual, my team, the brand, our wider stakeholders and customers reach that emotional target? So first of all, define what it is. Recalibrate your people. Sometimes there's some relearning of new skills. I saw empathy mentioned a few times. I do think I need to run an empathy class for CEOs based on your recommendations. 
And then there's stuff that's stuck that's, that we need to unlearn. I think one of the things that a lot of people need to unlearn is that you need to be in an office to be trusted. You need to be seen in order to reach your KPIs. And we know that's nonsense. We know that people have been working longer hours. They've been working a lot harder. They've actually been achieving targets much better than before. Not everyone, but a lot of people. Then we need to also nurture this love. So, you know, what are some of the skills that's really important? Listening, empathy, charisma and conflict. And charisma is an amazing, amazing skill. I remember years ago, I was asked to caretake a, a head of call center for an investment company. And people, I, I didn't know a lot of, about investments, like the technical stuff and the compliance stuff. I didn't know, but I had charisma. So I could take over calls, calm the client down enough with my charisma and then hand them to a technical expert. So I think even if a person doesn't have all the answers, if they've got care, a caring voice, if they understand, if they make the person feel safe, you can go a long way in creating a relationship that opens you up for you know, landing whatever the technical expertise is that the client needs. And then there's rituals. So rituals have become so much more important now that we're working in this virtual space. The way we connect, I'm presenting pretty much to a black screen. And in a lot of workshops, we, we end up in, we, we, we just say, cameras on culture, we need to connect. As human beings, we need to read the cues to determine whether the environment is safe. And that's where those check-ins, how do you feel? What lands in the room? You know, maybe someone's coming to a meeting with a camera on and they're frowning and we go, oh, that person's pissed off, but maybe they're not pissed off. Maybe they just had a rough start to the morning. So those check-ins become, let's land, let's bring everything that we have in the room. Let's surface that and understand where everyone is. And then, as I said, some celebrations, a retrospective is a great, great opportunity to actually look back and understand, you know, what happened this year? What can we learn from that? And as I said, then the festivals, celebrating people, uh, celebrating some of our failures. All right. So I want to propose to you that love by design, not default. Look at your employee journeys, your people, your customers, see them as a garden. And in a garden, we need to tend it, we need to fertilize, we need to plant, we need to nurture. Sometimes we need to pull out the weeds. And if you use that metaphor around your people, I truly believe that this can be one of your silver bullets that can really improve your customer and your employee experience. Thanks. Thank you, Chantelle. 